Hey, it's Noah, and welcome back to the barn. My mother-in-law is a huge fan of any woodworking that has epoxy resin in it. And over Thanksgiving 2023, she showed me this picture of a table she was looking to purchase. She asked me if I could make her a table like this, and I said, Sure! <laughs> I started by attempting to flatten this $200 spalted black walnut slab that I picked up from my local lumber mill. I used my handheld power plane to get it roughly flat and removed any pieces of bark that were left on the slab. I then used my circular saw to shorten the slab on both ends. I cut the slab down the middle and arranged the pieces so there would be a channel for the epoxy in the middle. Coffee tables are generally two feet wide by four feet in length. And once the slab was rough milled, I could work on the mold for the pour off camera. I used my sander to clean up the live edge so that the epoxy would stick to it better. A wire wheel or some sort of metal brush would probably work better here. Once the mold and slab were prepped, I arranged the pieces and prepped the epoxy for pouring. I used an orange mica powder to dye the epoxy and mix the resin and hardener thoroughly together. I did two pours. The first was orange and the second one was clear to match the reference photo. After the first pour was semi hard, I moved the entire mold into our garage. I figured that the tacky epoxy would be a problem if I wanted to make more sawdust in the barn. Each pour took roughly two weeks to dry because the winter temperatures were the lowest they'd been all year. Once the epoxy was dry, I moved the table back into the barn. The mold came loose fairly easily thanks to the tuck tape. Here's a time lapse of me upgrading my router sled with construction lumber for around $150. This upgrade enables me to mill two foot by six to eight foot pieces of wood. I could have taken the top down the road to get surfaced by a big machine, but I figured it was a good opportunity to increase the capability of my shop.
Once the upgrade was done, I could set about flattening the table. For anyone looking to make an epoxy table, just a heads up, epoxy shavings are the absolute worst. And that's the top done for now. At this point, I wasn't sure how I would do the table base. The table top had gotten to be pretty thin after flattening, and I didn't want to cut into the top for fear of ruining the orange epoxy, so I opted for this design. My mom-in-law lived overseas in Japan for a while, and it had a big influence on her life. I assumed that she would like the rigid and geometric design of the legs, and having the base be a fancy tray solved the problem of cutting into the top. So I set about milling some leftover red oak for my TV stand project that I completed over a year ago. For the top of the base, I used half lap joinery that I cut using my plunge router and a chisel. I did the legs in two pieces. I wanted to do a four-sided taper for the longer bottom pieces, as I had never done this before. So I made an adjustable tapering jig for the table saw that I really should have made ages ago. It worked pretty well and made quick work of shaping the legs. The second piece of the legs was challenging because it's smaller in size. I had no clue how I was going to efficiently cut this pyramid shaped block using power tools. If worst came to worst, I could make the cuts by hand, but even then the work holding would be tricky. After sleeping on it for about a week, I came up with a decent solution. A small jig that I could securely clamp the pieces to and make the angled cuts on the miter saw. This jig was made by a process of trial and error. I added one backing plate for the block to butt up against after I noticed that the block was moving a little while cutting. Then this happened. I 
I added another backing plate, squared it up, and made the rest of the cuts safely. I'd say the end result is great and I'm already having ideas about what else I can make using these angled blocks. Once I had the two leg pieces, I could set about joining them together. I used two dowels for added stability. I drilled two holes through the pyramid block and put two wood screws into the holes so that just the tips of the screws were poking out. I could then press the longer leg section into the screws to indicate where I should drill the dowel holes. This worked pretty well, but took some trial and error. I could then set about gluing the base together. I wanted to use dowels on every glue joint just because I figured the added stability would be good for the lifespan of the table. I glued the half lapped rectangles together and then glued the pyramid blocks onto the corners as a butt joint at first. Then I went in after the glue was done drying and added dowels to the joint. Once that was done, I could glue the leg pieces onto the pyramid pieces, fastening the legs into place. This worked really well, and I feel much more comfortable knowing that the legs are sturdy because of the dowels. I used Type Bond 1 on this glue up, and it made the finishing steps much easier because I wiped away the squeeze out with a wetted rag. Once the base was glued together, I stained it black. I wanted the base to be as dark as night because I figured it would contrast well with the orange and walnut top. I ended up putting two coats of black stain on. While the stain was drying, I started finish sanding the top, starting at 60 grit and working my way up to 400 grit. put a small chamfer on all edges. Over time, the top had warped a bit, so I used the base as sort of reinforcement to bring the table back into flat. I glued the two high corners to the base and then pinned more dowels into the wooden sections of the top off camera. This worked really well to fasten the base to the tabletop.
Once the top was glued onto the base, it was ready for finish. I think Osmo wood finish would have looked awesome on this table, but I ended up using Odie's oil for a couple of reasons. It's much faster to cure, and it is a little more foolproof. I've used Osmo a few times on my last few projects, and parts of the finish come out a little tacky and uneven. I'm sure that this is due to my method of application, but I wasn't looking to futz with it this time around. Odie's oil is just easy. An added benefit of building this for my mom-in-law is that I'll get to monitor how the table changes over time, and I can always refinish the table for her in a few years. And that's the table done. We delivered the table on the same day it was finished. And it's safe to say they were pretty happy with the end result. Yeah, that is perfect. Look at that. Wow. Um, I freaking love it. Thank you. Yep. You did a good job. It's beautiful. Oh, boy. I think it turned out great, and I'm looking forward to making more tables like this in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm so confused by that.